and then Steve Pooch had mentioned, yeah. and it was a whole cool piece of program. Yeah. And I went through the whole yeah. process myself. Mm -hmm. Thought it was a terrible process. <laughs> I mean, I and that, that's what prompted the, the crossroads. <laughs> <laughs> the Trump and your piece. That's, that's, right. that's yeah, the yeah, first yeah. thing we talked about. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, many, first many other thing. things, yeah. but, but mostly how Bill Visa was. Yeah, <laughs> and then, was it was very approachable. It is funny yeah. because I think the energy was kind of like, oh, this process is like crazy. I need to do something about it, and so it became a full time job for me. I was, uh, like, and then that's when Steve decided to connect all of us, and then one thing led to another. We discovered that each gold visa holder and other people who were also gold visa holders mm. were already doing their own thing. We're like, let's combine our powers. That's right. Like, let's not reinvent the wheel. Yes. And uh, here we are today. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think uh, Steve, uh, oh, wait, go ahead, Tom. Go ahead. No, no, yeah. this is so good. I'm just going to hey. check. I mean, you're probably signed off on the Foreign Talent Act, so mm -hmm. you're quite familiar with the yeah, gold I'm, card program? I'm not super... Uh, <laughs> Okay. I'm not uh, super briefed on the details, yep. uh, but the but the main idea, of course, I, I yep. uh, participated in the initial uh, brainstorming uh, yep. and the public consultation, and cool. that was the first public consultation I joined platform that we got so many English yeah. <laughs> yeah. comments, yeah. which is a really promising sign. Okay, well, uh -huh. just to give you the, the brief context yeah. about what this visa actually yeah, is, sure. so it's a four-in-one visa, mm -hmm. so you get an open work yeah. permit, residence permit. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and yes. the visa, yeah. like residence card, mm -hmm. uh, you apply entirely online, mm -hmm. uh, and it's based on your skills as a person. You don't need sponsorship from Italian mm -hmm. company yeah. to company. So basically, you can be an amazing technologist mm -hmm. in Silicon Valley, go onto yeah. the website, that, that much upload some documents. <laughs> cool, <laughs> excellent. Mm -hmm. um, what we found mm -hmm. is that it's been uh, like unexpectedly popular with digital nomads, mm -hmm. uh, freelancers tech professionals and artists. So we kind of, that, that was what we designed for. So yeah, I, I, it's I, working. I, I, <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. No, nothing unexpected about it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Cool. Okay. So you, you know all of the context, uh, uh -huh. which is, is great. Um, I don't know, Shell, if you wanted me to launch into this community. Oh, please do. Uh, He's yeah. more eloquent than I am. So. That's not true. <laughs> Uh, so I'm I'm the good cop. Steve Chen and, and uh -huh. Shelley has all of the, the uh -huh. constructive criticism. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. But, but yeah. you're the good cop. I'm the, the, the creative cop. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate that. So look, partially because of the the process, uh -huh. and you know, I, I was one of the first fifty people to get the gold card, and Eric was quite early on as well. Uh -huh. uh, we found that a kind of a community was forming out of gold card holders, yeah. helping people apply, yeah. and also helping them integrate with life in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. uh, so that community has been running for a few years now, and mm -hmm. it's got all of the traits you'd expect in a nice open source community. Yeah. And so we decided to get together and work out how can we actually contribute back uh, to Taiwan. Sure. Uh, so one of the things that we've done is we started an open source project. Uh -huh. uh, we've made uh, a website, uh, uh -huh. which is under uh, Apache 2 and Creative Commons. Uh -huh. um, basically, I took a whole bunch of forum posts uh -huh. I'd written over the past few years, turned them oh, into cool. Markdown. Cool. And um, Eric uh, grabbed Hugo. Uh, the what's, static, the, what's the address? Uh, TaiwanGoldCard.com. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, I, I Git, there. GitHub. Yeah. Dot com slash TaiwanGoldCard. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah, uh, so it's it's written in Hugo, the static site generator, mm -hmm. uh, and the idea was basically mm -hmm. to share our experience, mm -hmm. step new applicants through mm -hmm. uh, from what the program is, how do people qualify. Mm -hmm. uh, how to actually work the online portal and mm -hmm. deal with its various errors, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and then what they should do when they want to mm -hmm. move to Taiwan, you know, tax, mm -hmm. getting family visas, uh, health insurance, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So I think in general, uh, as a headline, we're trying to mobilize this gold card community as a force for good in, in Taiwan, mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. a lot of very passionate people who care mm -hmm. a, a lot and uh, want to really promote Taiwan is an mm -hmm. awesome place to live, work, and invest. Yeah. Um, so we've got six contributors on GitHub, and uh, mm -hmm. we're looking hey. for more. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're really in inspired by uh, GovZero, and I, mm -hmm. I think Eric last night put in a, a proposal to uh, mm -hmm. have a session at the... At the GovZero Summit yeah, in yeah. Hainan, right, yeah, yeah, the yeah. cultural and food capital. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah that's great. <laughs> but that's, that's my spiel. Mm -hmm. um, so... I don't know if uh, you wanted to talk further about mm -hmm. the, the process and where we think mm -hmm. uh, 
things need to be proved. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. Anyone else has other context? Not really. I, I mean, originally the meeting we scheduled today was originally to introduce Steve to you, yeah. and it eventually evolved into something which we are all working on something. So sure, I thought sure. it actually be much more productive and constructive if we focus on this whole card. Yeah. And everybody to kind of meet together. Uh, we. Uh, it's, we, I mean, from our aspect, from Crossroads aspect, we believe that the gold card is actually very, very important yeah. in changing things. Yeah. Uh, the open work permit leads to very interesting possibilities mm -hmm. yeah. in changing the whole ecosystem and how people work together here. That's right. So kudos to you know, no, no, everything. You know. no, and I sent a pull request to you. Right. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the website. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just the you know, yeah. two-factor authentication, Sounds proving good. that you're actually a site owner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. Due diligence. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, that's what it, we, I mean, Crossroads, our, our role right now is we're just supporting and seeing how we can help, you know, especially since we've been working on similar issues, yeah. as you know, in the past and yes. still working on similar things. Uh, but just wanted to kind of you to meet the group. Yeah. You know. Um, uh, and feel free to, to use this venue for your, you. your future gatherings. I mean, yes. this is a free venue. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, just at the time. <laughs> right, uh, the, the basement is also pretty good uh, yeah. for, for uh, like if you want a quieter meeting uh, because it's kind of loud-ish because it's a park after all, right? But, but <laughs> the basement is really nice, so you can also check it out. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, okay. oh, so I'm, I'm Jonathan, I'm, I'm from FutureWork. So Hi. we run a co-working space in Taiwan. Yeah. So we've been uh, thinking, seeing a lot of foreigners come through, myself and Daniel. Um, and I, I think one thing is that we want to also help, you know, find more opportunities for the more, more workers coming in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. What they can do to help yeah. Taiwan, uh, besides the community itself, and you know, what other kind of opportunities. Um, so we've been talking to NDC a lot about how we can help. Mm -hmm. But one thing that I think always we, as a region, mm -hmm. also, you know, mm -hmm. how how do we work with the government? Right. What is the best way? Mm -hmm. You know, this community website, in a sense. Obviously, it's not an official. Mm -hmm. But how? You know, what is the best way? Or do you have any suggestions mm -hmm. on how we can work with government well, departments? It being unofficial is the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, random officials to send pull requests. Yeah. <laughs> Harder the other way around. Yeah, yeah I totally agree with you. So this, what was interesting was that before mm -hmm. I met um, mm -hmm. Tom and Eric, yeah. um, we were me and Steve. We were just like, oh, you know, how are we? going to uh, tackle this whole process and obviously we thought we felt like working mm. with the government might yeah. take a long time I because know. of the policy yeah. and the people yeah. you have to meet and so we were like screw it you know let's just do like a wikipedia thing right. you have maybe everyone to contribute to it mm -hmm. and um and then that's when tom was like already working on a similar effort and what was interesting guys when we all came together i, I feel like we all had individual skill sets mm -hmm. uh for example i think jonathan um and david they definitely tackle the more official side with the government um, because they are just a lot more they, they have a lot more experience going in that direction mm -hmm. and then obviously I'm more a stronger proponent of open source uh, community mm -hmm. yeah. and somewhat of a hybrid but mm -hmm. I think you know tackling the open source side and mm -hmm. the open community is also good because that will also mm -hmm. allow things to flow more organically mm -hmm. and then maybe in conjunction the government will be inspired mm -hmm. by that process as well so very much so so I think we've come together. Uh, Jonathan here been, has done a really great job in like form, you know, making sure that we made this more official. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, the the group of us have come together and said, okay, let's go tackle this from all fronts and see what happens. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited. Oh, yeah, and you know, the the, the, the three uh, suggestions I will make. Uh, so I got uh, Jonathan, and David introduced me to a couple people at the NC folks. Really awesome people. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, one of the suggestions that I made that I think can be implemented within one hour mm -hmm. of their time mm -hmm. is uh, one. <laughs> Let's see if I can do it in half an hour. <laughs> Steve said he could do it in one, uh, 15 minutes. Okay, so okay. You, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just email Steve. Yeah, he, <laughs> there you go. He can do it in one minute. He does it in ten. He says that maybe his kid can do it in like an hour. But um, basically, uh, the three suggestions would be one: um, fixing the English on the all the notification emails. Mm -hmm. um, all the notification emails that uh, Gold Beast holders receive are not that informative and confusing, mm -hmm. and it doesn't really describe the next steps. Mm -hmm. And so, so that's a MOI thing, right? It's an interior thing. Uh, yeah. so 
Yeah, the NIA is the agency that, right. as I understand, operates yeah. the portal. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's something very easy. I, that's something that I'm willing to take off time work just to like flush it all out yeah. in one day. Um, and then uh, the second thing is uh, automatically compressing photos on the website. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I've mentioned this so many times, but right mm-hmm. now, uh, just from not being able to compress photos automatically mm-hmm. has caused a lot of people to use like third party software, especially if they're not technically savvy. Mm-hmm. They had just ha- I've personally helped an applicant resize their photo wow. for their application. Exactly. It's, it's a thing. And that, that costs maybe mm-hmm. like, you know, 10 minutes of our time, an yeah. hour of someone mm-hmm. else's time. Mm-hmm. Um, I think auto So, so you're, you're saying that compressing it in the browser, right? Yeah, like in downscaling the browser. it in the browser. In the browser. So okay. they can upload any file mm-hmm. format and mm-hmm. then the browser would automatically do that. I think that would actually solve a lot of pain points. Um, okay. And then making it more clear that you can upload more supplement documents. Because uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. right now the UI and UX design mm-hmm. for the website is confusing. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's obviously mm-hmm. further down the road. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the third proposed uh, proposed change is um, making sure that there's a source of truth. Mm-hmm. So currently, officially, mm-hmm. all the data is uh, separated onto different websites. Mm-hmm. And so the in- information on which category that you qualify for mm-hmm. is on a different site on which you apply. Mm-hmm. And having all the information aggregated onto one website would mm-hmm. also immensely help people so they have to go to you know tom and eric's website to to pull most of this information Mm -hmm. but i think this is something that could be easily solved if they had Mm -hmm. just aggregated it Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. i think that's uh Mm -hmm. part of a conflict between different ministries one of the things we we solved that uh in a few recent websites there's Mm -hmm. hike that taiwan that gov that there's ocean that taiwan that gov (laughs) that's the two main things that we didn't take away any existing websites, but rather uh, made a new one that has a unified front end that talks uh, via open API <laughs> to the backends. Uh, and the backends are still there. So yeah. people who are uh, very much veteran mountaineers wouldn't complain yeah. that they yeah. have to learn something too simple, right? <laughs> so, but like it's like you know hiking yeah. is the inherent challenge. But for everybody else uh, who have not filed these applications before, it's very hard to explain why climbing a a mountain in Taiwan require you to mm. talk to the national parks, the 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 forestry bureau, <laughs> and also the indigenous council. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, it's easy to explain the indigenous part, but but the other three, <laughs> it's not very well integrated. So mm. so we did a. Uh, single website. And you know what's amazing about Tom and Eric's website is mm-hmm. that like um, one of the features of their website is that you can go in there, um, mm-hmm. select kind of your 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 situation. Mm-hmm. So you could be if you have a Taiwan Taiwanese national parent, mm-hmm. uh, if you're off of a certain category, they they actually recommend other visas that could be available to you, which has been immensely helpful. I've heard from a lot of our friends back in Silicon Valley, mm-hmm. loved that feature on their website. But anyway, that's not part of the easy things to implement. So, um, and then one of the things that Steve had mentioned was, um, uh, you know, a lot of our our friends in Silicon Valley, they can't apply for technology because for some reason, I don't know if it's, I feel like I'm being recorded, but can I speak freely? You you are. are. I I can say you can speak freely. And we're going to publish this on YouTube. Great. I'm going to call your old car. You're good. I can make it. Come on. Attribution only license. Excellent. Okay, so basically, um, a lot of our friends had been forced to apply in economy. Mm-hmm. I th- and then I suspect maybe because of the the ease of, uh, cri- you know, um, I mean, you just, the qualifications is a income restriction. Um, and that's it. Ah, okay. Right? And so what are people doing? Are People are not applying for the, uh, the category that they're supposed mm-hmm. to be applying for. They're, they're, they're applying for what's easy. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them, you know, they have... Uh, sort of their own principles, and so they're like, you know, I'm going to do technology because I belong this category. But what ends up happening is that it ends up taking two uh, yeah, two two months at most. Yeah, and and then they ask for all this technology requirements. Mm-hmm. This is this is that has something that happened to mm-hmm. uh, Ewan Poon, for example, uh-huh. and uh, he he mentioned that they asked for so much so many credentials, so much press articles. Yeah, in the end, they were like, hey, we're just going to put you in technology so we can get you a uh-huh. cool visa. Uh-huh. And it was like, it if I had no economy, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's more economy visa yep. given out than anything like everything yes. else combined. Yep. So right, the, the so under four to three, it yeah. feels a little hacky, you yeah. know. Yeah. The yeah. underlying yeah. reason for that is, uh, as you know, how the qualification process works mm-hmm. is it first goes through 
uh, yeah. Ministry of Labor, and then they send it down to a ministry. I know the, the, the MOST. Yeah. Um, actually, they mostly work with graduate level uh, universities, yeah. so so that's why they ask for more because they know there's more to ask. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the the issue is, I think, uh-huh. uh, they're not really transparent about it because the top level information, uh-huh. the regulations for qualifying foreign yeah. special professionals in uh-huh. science and technology, Article One says you can qualify based on your salary. Uh-huh. But if you click through a few links and actually find a deeper implementation, uh, they say if you're qualifying for Article 1, you also need to provide all of the documents for Article 2 or 3. Ah. And that's not clear anywhere okay. on mm. the official okay. government websites. So this is one of the reasons why Eric and I got together made a kind of like a wizard for working out mm-hmm. how people qualify because mm-hmm. with with waiting to fly into each of the regulations mm-hmm. and recommend that people go for economy mm-hmm. instead of science and tech even if they're in that industry because mm-hmm. it's it's very difficult to qualify mm-hmm. and i know a lot of amazing people who are like high level folks who can't qualify yeah. for science but that wizard do you mean the application process page on your website or uh, so there's a- actually a wizard uh, okay. with yeah you tick boxes wizard. to answer questions mm-hmm. and it will tell you which regulations okay yes yeah. paperclip yeah paperclip yes. style wizard <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, we've renamed that didn't we what's it called now what? it's called the gold card qualification check now because no one knows what a wizard is yeah, yeah. okay fast check but it's not on the website that, that's on the website. It's if on you the click website. on Do I Qualify and then click yeah, on I, I just Qualification click on the Check. Ah, okay. It's a little bit. Yeah. Check. I don't see a check. Anyway. No, I'll send you a link. <laughs> okay. Right. <laughs> We've got to make Oh, that. here you go. Use the Qualification Check to yes. find suggestions. Yeah. Are you a lawyer? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I am not a lawyer, but... <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then, yeah. That's actually another one to bring up. You know, no one, no lawyer has made it through the gold card process. Yeah. 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 No okay, so if you I check, are you a lawyer? You'll yeah. say, it's not for you. Yeah, you've been denied. <laughs> Access there, there, denied. There will, will be. Yes. <laughs> There will be some information. Speaking of lawyers, so there's a whole business that spawned around this whole thing too, I know, right? I know, yes. Like people uh, that I mean, Tom doesn't charge for his time, but there are people who would charge up to two thousand USD. Yeah, I'm aware of that. Yeah, to go through this process, and so it's like you know, the system just feels really backwards because now people are kind of gaming the system. Mm-hmm. They're applying for things that they're not supposed to be applying for, and it's just flooding the. You know, it's it's difficult to to really make this program a success and make sure that the mission and values of this program is fulfilled when mm-hmm. people are just coming here to like take advantage of it, yeah. right? If that happens, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I see that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, is there anything we can mm-hmm. do? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it will help to to just talk to, for me, to talk to the NIA and then fix the website so that it can... Actually, we talked about this a long time ago, right? About turning this into an open API kind of site. We were pushing right. that for a while. Right, yeah. so, so people can, can build their own front ends. Yeah. Uh, and, and therefore, you know, if you prefer to talk to a lawyer, you can, yeah. I don't know, on a VR mask or something. <laughs> <laughs> whatever floats your boat. <laughs> yeah, whatever floats your boat. I, I have actually tried talking with the NIA, uh-huh. but I suspect that the website was implemented by a contractor or something, uh-huh. because, for instance, yes. the main yeah, application yeah, yeah. portal yeah. has a robots.txt that yeah. disallows search engines. Yeah, uh, but uh, but uh, in, in the procurement and, regulation, yeah. uh, that's kind of the first thing I did as the show yeah. minister. Uh, is that if a contractor refused to provide open API that would yep. enable the same kind of access as they nice. would uh, for the human beings, then they're uh, basically, we copy this language about um, accessibility, like yes. universal access. Yes. So if you're not providing open API, or you're providing it but at like double the price or something, yep. then you're discriminating against robots. Yep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 robots. Just, they are people too. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh, right. So, so, so. I mean, uh, and but as with any procurement regulation, yes. it's only as good as the agency is willing to use it. Right. Yeah. So, yes. so the, the fact that they can use this language that we put in to extract the API from their contractor for free, yeah. uh, they still need to, uh, you know, the Ministry of Interior still have to sign off on it, of yes. course. Yeah. Right. So, so um, I think, so you've made some progress, you said, or not? Well, yeah, I mean, we were progress. pushing, along with Karen, about uh -huh. pushing for open source APIs one way. Uh -huh. uh, this was back for the immigration visa, the immigration mm -hmm. portal, yeah. uh, as well as the, back then, is like the, well, actually the Trump yeah, I think there's another team that's pushing for an ARC check website. Uh, yeah, to, to be able to yeah. yeah. If it was open source API, yeah, you leave it mm -hmm. to the private sector to create some really interesting tools. So I think that'd be cool. Yeah. But for, for government websites, open source tooling, open APIs yeah. is, is promoted and yeah, of expected. Course, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's part of our procurement. And that's, that's how we built Hive.Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Because the existing siloed websites, yeah. uh, we all kind of just extract an open API out of it using the procurement rule that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, and then each individual is just a very small procurement because they cannot be lodged. If they charge uh, like two times, three times for providing of an API, they yeah. could be disqualified as vendors. Uh, it's just like a vendor saying, you know, providing our website to people with blindness is beyond our capability. If you want us to pass WCAG or something, uh, yeah. you have to pay us five times. And yeah. they get disqualified for that if they dare to say that. So, so th that's already uh, pushed very much. And we have a uh, project where we work with uh, around 30 interns uh, every year uh, to systemically look at the kind of pain points. Yeah. And they are using open API redesign the process uh, yeah. without sacrificing the process. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so they did something like the hiking one is kind of mm, popular now. Um, they did the National Palace Museum ticketing process. Mm -hmm. Uh, they did uh, last year because we uh, allowed the students to choose their favorite topics. So last year, a lot of people did the uh, NCC, the National Communication Commission, uh, flag TV channel as biased uh, website, <laughs> which was a, not a very popular part of their website, <laughs> but because there was some TV channels that are even less popular, I guess. <laughs> so the people use that a lot. So so it, it depends on what they're interested in. Uh, but I mean, yeah. like I've mm -hmm. I've got a vision. Some of the the content that's been mm -hmm. created yeah. from our contributors, like yeah. Philip Berkqvist Ber mm -hmm. uh, yeah. from, from Sweden, has written mm -hmm. all this information about this particular health insurance like corner case, mm -hmm. uh, which is nowhere else uh, mm -hmm. written up. And it would be amazing to see that on an open API and yeah. pulled and have government websites actually look mm -hmm. at uh, citizen content and yeah. potentially say, Instead of writing it ourselves, mm -hmm. we'll just take this. But yeah, that, that's mm -hmm. supposedly an NDC uh, highlight of the yeah. bilingual nation uh, program, right? A lot of bilingual nation programs have deliverables maybe 10 years down the road, mm -hmm. uh, like officially bilingual, right? But, uh, <laughs> but, but the, the accessible services and websites, I think they listed as a kind of one year or two year deliverable. So, so I think that's, a, uh, that's very much an NDC thing. Uh, so, and, and you say you've been talking with NDC? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, one mm -hmm. of the questions today is, I mean, you can you give us some great examples for the websites that yeah. I think we'll, we'll have a take a look yeah, at sure, and see sure. how we can, you know, mm -hmm. talk to NDC about yeah. if, if that's a possible way for us. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. Okay, so so you, you talk with uh, which department? Uh, Renly Chu. Ah, uh, Renly Chu, okay. Yeah. Right, the, the HR department. Yeah. Okay, yeah, they're, they're in charge of that. Um, Okay, yeah, I, as far as I know, I, I think uh, because uh, Minister Guo Minxin uh, was uh, deputy um, uh, commissioner in the NDC mm. uh, around when uh, this go kart thing uh, was being brainstormed. So yeah. I, I think he very passionately uh, believes that that's the, the direction to go. Uh -huh. uh, and so I, I think it's politically, I think it's, it's very possible. That, that he will want uh, a few highlights that could be delivered uh, within uh, the, the fiscal year uh, without waiting for next year's budget. Uh, and uh, friendly, accessible government services might, might just be one. Yeah, so yeah, if you talk to, to Renly Chu, uh, also feel free to, to copy my office uh, and see what, uh, what we can help. Yeah, because we've done quite a bit of uh, like integration of the various government services by now. Uh, so if you're um, 
you think that going through four websites to complete one process <laughs> is it, a lot. We we had like ten. <laughs> just 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 to do this very simple thing. Then I should be praised, and you guys did a great job. Of uh, starting a new company was that, but was the case. <laughs> yeah, to, to 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 create a new company, you literally had to go through uh, ten different yes. websites. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Yes, you know about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So, so we're we're cautiously optimistic. Like, we, <laughs> if we could help integrating that, we can integrate pretty much everything. Right. So, so that's that. And and then uh, I think the NIA part, especially about compressing the photos, that's a very long hanging fruit. Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then there's probably code already uh, online uh, that can do this in the client side. Right. Right. So if you have a link to a certain GitHub project that does that. Then, then I can probably talk to the, the contractor to integrate it in. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and if that does be, come become like a project, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if it's and there are low other low hanging fruits, mm -hmm. uh, can we communicate that to you guys? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, the the thing is that uh, we we work uh, uh, through the secondments. Mm -hmm. So my office have uh, secondments from I think around twelve different ministries to my office. So mm -hmm. it's not me personally. It's yeah. that that our MOI uh, secondment, yeah. or uh, if it's about diplomacy or foreign service secondment, yeah. uh, will be the window uh, mm -hmm. through which that, that you can reach the ML, MLI folks. Okay, that would be yeah. great, because it would be uh -huh. interesting uh -huh. to kind of guide uh -huh. them through sort of the UX and mm -hmm. UI sort of experience. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I mean, there's, obviously there's a lot more that can be improved, but those are mm -hmm. the basic ones I think that would mm -hmm. probably yeah, they, they are low-hanging fruits, and yeah. and once you have a working relationship, I think they will be much more receptive about the uh, idea of open API. Yeah. Right, because previously they would think, you know, um, yes. this is doing pretty well, <laughs> unless you're translating in twelve different languages. Oh wait, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was. <laughs> Okay. Well, you were anyway. Yes. <laughs> that, yes. that was the, that was the original thing we talked about. Yes. <laughs> like the English website is pretty good, but oh, yeah. he, he wanted it to be in twelve different languages. Uh, yeah. but, but anyway, so uh, sorry, sorry, I was teasing you. But <laughs> but, but I think that, I think uh, even an English website uh, can make uh, quite a few improvements from your side, and then uh, I think they will be much more open uh, to integrate your wizard uh, and their website in, okay. in whatever way possible, uh, and then the mystery of uh, Interior will then be able to point out and that's one or two front ends that you guys are already working on and saying that these are the kind of immediate benefits if we uh, extract open API out of the vendors. Otherwise, the vendor would ask, "Okay, but who are our front ends? Who, who do I talk to?" Right? And, and then, and then, yeah. If, if there's no answer, it's harder to make that proponent. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. And then, what about the the notifications? Um, is that yeah. something that you guys can collaborate with Cosmos or mm -hmm. or? Or I can volunteer. I'm happy to. Yeah, like, volunteer is always much easier. Oh, it's volunteer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. of course, of yes. course. It, it's it's <laughs> like <laughs> reverse <laughs> procurement, yeah. right? You, you do the spec and we do the implementation. Okay, so perfect. I will. I shall volunteer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we won't char yeah. charge you though. <laughs> you already pay. You? You, you already pay your taxes. <laughs> 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 Yeah, but, but that's that's how we did, for example, the mask map. Okay. The, the mask map was done by volunteer, and the only thing oh, we did is to okay. talk to Google to waive the API usage fees. Yeah. So, but the entire specification is, is driven by the social sector, by right. in, in the GovZero Slack channel. And all we did is just to, to talk to the system integrators in the National Health Insurance Agency saying, okay, there's already quite a few front ends. They rely on uh, people to uh, update the uh, stock levels of the pharmacies uh, by, by themselves. And that's not scalable, right? So, right. so we really need to provide them with real-time information every thirty seconds, and right. and that's literally the only thing we did because uh, everything else, including the chatbot or whatever, is already done there yeah. in the social sector, right? So it really was reverse procurement, and and in this situation, then we can maybe uh, have a twenty-four hour or seventy-two hour turnaround, but in, in traditional procurement, it's easily three months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm happy to volunteer. I build mm -hmm. um, support teams, customer mm -hmm. support teams, and then mm -hmm. I've been in QA also. Mm -hmm. So I know how to like mm -hmm. do step by step instructions. Mm -hmm. um, even our mothers could follow it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think I'm up for the challenge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Right. So, so the action item would be do you have those 
corrected notification email ready even just one? Oh, I have screenshots of other people's <laughs> notifications, but I, I think what I'd like to see is all the notifications available yeah. and when they are triggered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and then sure, sure. and sure. and then I can sure, just sure. go through each sure, one. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, but but we, we need a we need a pilot, right? So it's just okay. just one one would be good. okay. I could say like, that like one one horrible, the screen. most horrible. <laughs> oh, okay. I have, I have the most horrible one screenshot right the, now. The one, the one right. that uh, just gives you a three-character Chinese status that says secondary processing. Oh, yeah, that's right. a good one. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Right. It, 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 maybe it's in big five and you cannot even read it. <laughs> <laughs> ideally, ideally. Yeah. It's like pixel. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the yeah. mochi paki mm. kick. <laughs> Would you back, but, but bake me a thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so I, I think uh, if you have a truly horrible one uh, and a, yeah. a like before or after, uh, it's it's easier for me to then talk to our MOIC conference. Oh yeah, like, I like, love this that. is so I bad. Exactly you gotta work with these guys. This is actually speak English, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and then the if there's a uh, GitHub link to something that compresses photo on the browser, that that's great as well. Yeah. yeah, because then for the vendor, it's just a drop-in replacement. And, yeah. and then based on these two, uh, then we can graduate to a library that is, don't you? Okay, awesome. And then wh where would you like for me to send like these examples? To my, to my email. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. I shall do that. Yes. Okay. Well, uh, I, I'm Eric. Hi. So, so what is part about uh, removing the barrier of entry of Taiwan? But there is a resource for the part which I to focus on. It's about the community. And there is like, so she did. In our community, we have like about 150 people now. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, okay, so and more than uh, one out of ten is part yeah, of the community. Yeah, it's pretty good. Actually. Yeah, <laughs> good conversion rate. Yeah, yeah. and uh, what we notice is like many people who come here, like hang around for maybe one year and don't really know what to do. And what we were thinking was like. Try to give them like some visibility of yeah. how they could like contribute to Taiwan. Yeah. So I mean, we have this idea from the Go Zero uh, uh, movement. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Really good. So I'm thinking about. I mean, what we wanted to have your insight about uh -huh. how we can like uh -huh. have like more visibility on how foreigners can help Taiwan. We're just getting more digital nomads to to move to Taiwan is <laughs> helping immensely. Mm -hmm. Right, and in, in uh, since we're talking about Ministry of Interior, uh, they they in their kind of police section, there's this idea called Jianjing Lu, right? The rate upon which you can see a police randomly on the street, uh, and and. <laughs> <laughs> Right. No, th this makes people feel safer. This yes. is like yeah. science, real yeah. <laughs> evidence backs it up. Yeah. <laughs> Even though it may or may not have anything to do with with actually just efficacy, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just, just just seeing random police right. people yeah. on the street makes people feel safer. Yeah, right? uh, and so uh, seeing random people who don't look like Mandarin is their um, you know native language uh, on the street uh, promotes this uh, kind of transcultural norm. Right, yeah. like, like instead of assuming that people read Big Five, well, read yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe one should not assume. Uh, maybe providing bilingual um, science and um, instructions is generally a good idea, and things like that. But if people are not reminded of that fact, um, like in their daily life, yes. uh, then it's very easy to, to go back into this uh, Mandarin only uh, mindset. Yes. Um, and so, just just getting more people visible uh, in in all walks of life. Uh, and also just promoting the idea that uh, there's more than 1,000 like super talented, super power people in Taiwan now. Yeah. Um, I think it's, it's generally a, a good idea in itself and especially now because Taiwan is safer than most other jurisdictions. Uh, and so if you're here doing pretty much whatever you're already doing, uh, but in a safer place, right? Okay. That, that, that alone is, is a pretty good call to action. Yeah. To, to many people who can uh, work uh, remotely. Yes. Uh, yeah. And if they're in the valley, many of them can work remotely, like forever. Many, <laughs> <laughs> many, many uh, companies uh, started adopting that as their HR uh, policy. So in, instead of saying, you know, uh, we're, we're contributing to, I don't know, the sustainable development goals, participating in a presidential hackathon, uh, which is all good and well, um, but that's. Uh, I think if, if I'm a uh, gold card uh, like person arriving to a foreign country, 
I think first I will still think about uh, how to migrate uh, my, my lifestyle, how to um, work with the um, community and so on. Um, I probably wouldn't think about, you know, how to solve systemic issues such as, I don't know, marine debris or uh, climate change <laughs> in, in, w within the first year <laughs> of arriving, uh, arriving to a foreign country. Uh, that, that, that takes um, maybe when I start feeling secure uh, in maybe reapplying, maybe naturalization, right? If you reapply Yay. on the fifth year, you get to naturalize without giving up uh, your original citizenship, right? So so this also Taiwanese uh, takes effect on the around the fourth or fifth year. And, and that's when you can say, okay, so this person has contributed significantly to the country because to qualify for dual citizenship, you still have to prove that, right? But, but that's probably not for the first year or not even for the second year. So I think for the first couple of years, I think we, we should highlight just how um, inclusive and friendly mm -hmm. this community is, yeah. right? and how inclusive and friendly this community is working with everyday people, yeah. uh, not necessarily on, on like large individual contribution. You, you worry about that when you want to get a dual citizenship, and that's like the fifth year down the line. Yeah, I totally agree with that because that's, that would be an organic process as a part yeah. of them implement, implementing themselves into Taiwan. I know. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. I think it's happened to all of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be quite honest, right? Like, we yeah. came here, didn't mm -hmm. really think about being involved, mm -hmm. but then we ended up being incredible. Like, I mm -hmm. was, again, born in the States and raised there, mm -hmm. and then I came to Taiwan. And I found myself to be extremely patriotic, mm -hmm. and I didn't know oh, wow. why, but it was because of the culture, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you just you interact with a lot of really kind people yeah. who are who practice humility and yeah. or extremely welcoming yeah. and then suddenly you just want to give back and that kind of synergy yeah. and and positivity really inspires other people to give back mm -hmm. so and I think that it in itself is pretty mm -hmm. awesome mm -hmm. and I think like you know Eric mentioned a really good point and you as well I, I just remember it Stephen had, uh, Steve had mentioned mm -hmm. you know one of the things that he cared about most was being able to provide resources that we've had you know, maybe because we have resources through friends and friends of friends to people who are just as deserving, yeah. but perhaps didn't have the right connections. Mm -hmm. And so, and it's all about not, again, not focused on like, you know, how to start your business, how to encourage you to like think of some innovative ideas, but it's like, where do you go to Taiwan? Like just life, lifestyle, like how do you open a bank account? You know, here's, <laughs> here's onboarding buddy where they're willing to spend their entire mm -hmm. time showing you around, showing yeah. you the ropes giving you a psychological safe place that's right, that's right. so that you can feel like, hey, you know, I feel like I'm starting to pick up on cultural yeah, subtext. Yeah, that's what I mean by changing you, right? I, I, I'm yeah. seeing more people like me or <laughs> yeah. more, more people who are friendly. Uh, yeah. And that, that changes things. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks for bringing that up, Eric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, John, I, you uh, I was going to say, you're, you're coding the profiles feature on the website this week, right? So oh, yeah. and start promoting the people who have come awesome. here and making that easily consumable in case mm -hmm. any other outlets want to also promote those people. So just uh -huh. the idea of gold card holders, here's how they're qualified, here's what they do, mm -hmm. here's what they're doing in Taiwan, mm -hmm. photo, name, simple mm -hmm. things like that for mm -hmm. the hundred people who've got it all done. Yeah, well, yeah that's great. Part of the association, the nonprofit that we are at Crossroads, yeah. uh, and I know, I think you saw the presentation. We yes, did, I did. Exactly I did. to uh, see. I mean, there's you have this ready and passionate and very talented community coming into Taiwan, and our association is trying to figure out how to cross that language and cultural barrier so that there is a meaningful avenue to share knowledge, yeah. experiences, and trying to kind of move away from the classroom style. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we're, you know, this is something that we're going to be happy to do in trial and error as we're, we're doing this association yeah. too. Um, so yeah, it'd be great to work with the gold card community on this. Yeah. Oh, um, I actually forgot to mention. So uh, I remember I had a meeting with uh, Tai Chen mm -hmm. and one of the things that I've mentioned uh, uh, that I think would be incredibly useful mm -hmm. is that the gold visa holders go through an orientation process mm -hmm. Um, just so that it, you know, it's a like college. Maybe you pick up your ID at the mm -hmm. orientation or something. But as immediately you 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 are approached with a welcome package. Mm -hmm. um, you have all the contacts, all the resources, mm -hmm. how to get set up, where to live, where mm -hmm. you find co working spaces. How you know if you need translations or you know things like that. Mm -hmm. um, to do what we do to the home quarantine people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. 
Yeah. I pay you thirty-three dollars by the day you complete it. Here, you have fourteen days to If you're just you pay us first thirty thousand times. Maybe not that much. Quarantine up. Quarantine up. Oh, that's great. Brilliant. Yeah, by the time after fourteen days, you can even send a test. Like you had fourteen days to study, and you have no excuse. Yeah, we should work with the the quarantine hotels to become good heart hotels. Yeah. This idea is under Creative Commons, really. Of course. Of course. There are lots of ideas. Yeah, but it, I think an on, like orientation would kind of complete the onboarding process. Yeah, the care the, package. The care package, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Showing exactly. a, an easy card as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. exactly. Yeah. Providing some Easy card yeah. So, um, oh, okay. that's the expressive machine. Just uh, thought yeah. of, of <laughs> one thing that I think every legislator needs to be aware mm -hmm. of, which is that the number one problem uh, for existing gold card holders, freelancers, digital nomads, is the requirement if they don't have a Taiwanese employer mm -hmm. to stay in Taiwan without leaving for six months before they can mm -hmm. get health insurance. Mm -hmm. That's fixed in mm -hmm. the new economic immigration mm -hmm. bill, which mm -hmm. is under discussion. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm aware of that, yeah. and I'm aware that it's fixed in the uh, yep. yeah, immigration bill. But there's a lot of people waiting for that. Some people know, aren't applying because yeah. of that. Yeah, but uh, I mean, the, the NHI has its own act, and the act is yes. very carefully politically balanced. And yes. Like, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, so it, it needs a special act to, to change any part of that. So, yes. yeah, we, we really can't uh, go back and change the NHI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I know it needs to be done through the legislature, but yeah. I, I just want you to know that this is a very common discussion in the gold yeah, card. I understand that. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dark, that was just a random tangent. Please mm -hmm. continue. Yeah, I mean, worries, I mean, worries. we could give you a thousand other things. The, the talking yes. about the NHI is a very Taiwanese thing to do. Okay. <laughs> Everybody has things to say about the NHI. Yeah. <laughs> it's an amazing system. It, yeah. it works really it's well. Pure, pure socialism. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Education and, and health are the two socialist yes. domains in, in Taiwan. Everything else is capitalist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is a really exciting time. I, you know, I'm so I feel so fortunate to be mm -hmm. around all of you guys because mm -hmm. I just feel like just having this gold visa process available. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? It's like it's seeded a lot of people's minds that there that Taiwan is a place that they can go to. Yeah. Before yeah. Taiwan was never a consideration. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So even if they don't come, I, I I'm already hearing a lot of conversations where they want to be mm -hmm. here yeah. and they want to find ways to contribute, oh, yeah. or they just want to come and like bunker down. That's okay. And we should help them, you know. Yeah, that, that, that should be encouraged. That, that should, should be encouraged. Be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this, I feel like this is an awesome time to, to leverage the coronavirus mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and turn something negative into something positive yes. in the country, right? Yes. yes. And oh. golden, golden line. Yeah. Like the golden line? <laughs> 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 we have that on video, right? <laughs> right we're going to do comedic stand up. I have a lot of jokes up my sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, so it's an honor to meet you though. I I, I, I was so excited. I was telling uh, some of my friends, like, oh my god, I'm gonna meet Aji Tang. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna vomit rainbows when I see her. I'm like, oh, no rainbows, but, <laughs> but lots of laughter. But thank yeah, you for that's having right, us. That's right. Um, yeah. yeah, we can add the rainbows in uh, with after that. <laughs> <laughs> it's great in the comments after all. <laughs> Alrighty, so yeah. so the the thing for me to do is I'll talk to our MLI department yeah. and I'll I'll expect a few um, constructive uh, creative criticism <laughs> coming from you and we'll see what we can do with the contractor uh, with a mid to long term goal of a more like NDC like bilingual for everything. But yeah. I think the kind of drinking our own champagne, really improving the process is is I think uh, bootstrapping right? yeah. because with other, otherwise it's harder for you to convince right the other uh, potential go card holders that we're serious. Yeah, uh, okay. <laughs> you're fancy. Yeah, joining <laughs> our ocean. It's Kool Aid. Yeah, drink, drinking our own Kool Aid. Yeah, that works too. That works too. <laughs> yeah. Champagne is a kind of cool thing. Anyway. anyway. <laughs> Digress. All right. Insufficient quantities. That's right. That's right. It's all magic. All magic. Suff sufficiently advanced cool thing. Right. So that, that's it for today. Yeah. So, yeah. This is really productive. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. And feel free to just just email anytime. Yes, yeah. I will. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, looking forward to the golden line. Yes, the golden line.